How are you getting along? This is the last lesson of module three. I know that this module is where we've done most of the heavy lifting. Trust me, once this is done, you're almost there. In the last 10 years, medical schools have introduced tests that measure the aptitude of applicants to see if they have the necessary mental abilities to succeed as a doctor. There are two aptitude tests, the UK CAT and the BMAT. Each exam tests slightly different skills. Each university will have selected one of these two exams as a requirement for entry and demands a certain score. The majority of UK medical schools ask for the UK CAT, and actually only a small minority, including Oxford and Cambridge, demand the BMAT. Depending upon which four universities you have chosen to apply to, you may be required to sit both exams. Be sure you have the time to do both exams without letting it affect your school grades. You may want to synchronise your choices so that you can save costs and effort by only having to do one exam. The exams are only eligible to be sat in English. They do not offer any special dispensation for students whose first language isn't English. First, let's talk about the UK CAT, otherwise known as the United Kingdom Clinical Aptitude Test. This is the test that the majority of universities require. It is there to make sure you have the mental capacity, attitude, and professional conduct required to be a good doctor. It tests five broad areas. Verbal reasoning, decision making, quantitative reasoning, abstract reasoning, and situational judgment. Become familiar with these situational judgment test types as they have become a very favorable method of testing at present when applying for jobs in the UK. Currently, they are the method for selection for foundation training, which is the first job you will have as a doctor in the UK. Registration for exams is May to September, and the exam window is between June and early October. The test lasts two hours, and 25% extra time is allowed for students with learning difficulties. The organisers say that you cannot prepare for these tests. However, anecdotally, people who practice get a feel for the type of questions being tested against the timer and enter the exam feeling more confident and prepared. Be strict with your timing for each section. A lot of people don't finish in time. Practice the pace at which you need to go through to get everything done in the exam. Points are awarded for correct answers, and no points are deducted for incorrect answers. Therefore, if you're not sure, it's worth making an educated guess. You will actually find yourself making a lot of educated guesses throughout your medical school exams too. You should allow a minute at the end of each section to go through the remaining question and make some educated guesses. On screen, the questions often go beyond the size of the screen. Use both vertical and horizontal scroll bars to make sure that you've read everything. During the exam, the computer will not let you move on to the next question until you have read the entire screen. Now, let's talk a bit about the BMAT, also known as the Biomedical Admissions Test. This is a written test deemed to be a predictor of how well people will perform in their first year of medical school. The BMAT can be sat worldwide, it is possible to pay to do the exam slightly early, so that when you submit your UCAS form, you can add your BMAT score to your application. The BMAT has three sections, which test 1. Aptitude and Skills, 2. Scientific Knowledge and Application, and the third section is a written task. Sections 1 and 2 are scored out of 9 to one decimal place. Then, section 3 is a two-hour written test. You cannot use any calculators or dictionaries, even for a foreign language. It is scored with a whole number of 1 to 5. Some tips for the BMAT. Do some practice tests to get yourself used to the format and the pace of the exam. Be strict again with your timings. A lot of people don't finish in time. Sections 1 and 2 points are given for correct answers and no points are deducted for incorrect answers. So again, educated guesses are encouraged. Section 3 is marked by two examiners and marks are awarded for the quality of written English and presentation. Now, let's talk about some general tips for both exams. The most important thing is to stay calm. It is really important that you do not panic during the exam. Things often don't go to plan, but don't worry. You won't be the only one. Have a plan and stick to it. Mentally prepare for what you're going to do with any unexpected surprises that come up. Make sure to take some deep breaths. As Rudyard Kipling wrote, keep your head when all about you are losing theirs. Start your preparation for these exams early. The earlier you take the exam, the better. Make sure you book as soon as it opens to ensure that you get the best time for you. Try and time it so that you do it early enough 
so that you can focus on the application process and preparing your personal statement and interview, but also at a time that doesn't in interfere with your school exams. Stay on top of booking dates and make sure to pick a date that suits you. The exams get booked up really quickly. Sometimes one or two sections can feel more difficult than others. Don't let this affect you. I can guarantee that almost everyone else will have found it equally as difficult. And if you remain focused, you can make up for it in the other sections while everyone else remains phased and is performing badly due to the previous errors. Like all of medicine, persistence and resilience is the name of the game. It is designed to test your calmness under pressure. The test goes by fast, so be disciplined. And if you are taking too long on one section, move on and then come back to it if you have time. Here, we have linked to a page on resources for all of the help that you need with the UCAT and BMAT exams. I'm so proud of you. You now have everything you need to help you get an interview at medical school. It takes a lot of work, but if you carry on with all the strategies in this module, there is no reason why you can't get an interview at the medical school you've always dreamed of. Once you have your interview, the rest is all within your control. Join us in the next module where we'll teach you how to get past the final hurdle of claiming your place at medical school.